everybody. Welcome back to Daily Easy English Expression. Today's expression is brought to you by our book club. We have a new book. I'll tell you about it at the end of today's video. Now today's expression is actually a word. It's a really good word, but it's kind of a difficult word, but I want you to know it. The word is hubris. Hubris. Now, hubris is very similar to confident. If somebody is confident, they feel good about themselves. They feel good about their ability, about their knowledge, about their skill, about their voice, about their energy, their power, their looks. So, I hope all of you are confident in yourself, that you believe in yourself. You're studying English with me. Now, is my English, are my lessons, are they easy? Not really. I speak pretty normal. My speed is not too slow. Uh, I have no captions. There are no words down below. Sometimes students say, please give me captions. No, I won't. Um, because in real life, there are no captions. But you're listening and you're watching my videos. That means you are confident in your ability. So you keep watching and you keep learning. That's really good. But hubris is when you have too much confidence. And you have so much confidence that everybody else is below you. Everybody else is nothing. You have become a god. That's what hubris is. So, he's confident, that's a good thing. He's too confident, not good. He's overconfident, not good. He has hubris that's really disgusting. He thinks he's a god. That's the idea. So when do we use this word hubris? It's especially common when we talk about politicians, athletes, business people, and brothers and sisters. <laughs> that's the idea. He has too much hubris. If somebody has hubris, they're arrogant. They're too confident. We don't really like them. Some people do, but many of us don't. Let's check out a dialogue. How can Obama keep spending more than the U.S. makes? Hubris. But doesn't he know this is not a good thing? He's Icarus. Only the sun will wake him up. President Obama. Uh, it's not just President Obama. It's the U.S. government. Do you know? The U.S. government is spending so much money doing this, doing that. And the incoming money is like nothing. It, it, it's really insane. It's, it's really bad. Uh, but they keep going. They keep going. So the question is, how can President Obama, but once again, not just Obama, the senators, the, the, the representatives, how can the U.S. government continue spending money like without any worry? How can they do that? The reason is hubris. It doesn't matter. It's okay. They don't care. They think they can. They think they are gods. And that's insane. Now, maybe the politicians in your country are wonderful, beautiful people. But probably not. Most politicians have a lot of hubris. And it's not just most politicians. People sometimes get too confident. Their pride becomes too big and they develop hubris. Now, look at me. 
as an English teacher. When it comes to teaching American pronunciation, cancellation, and, and speaking, I've got DDM classes and I've got PERF classes. And if you ask me, um, I think my classes are the best. I really do. I really think my classes, DDM and PERF, are the best. And I've looked at other teachers. And, you know, for example, Duncan in China. Uh, Learn American English with teacher Paul. A.J. Hogue. I Swear English. Uh, and then the women teachers. Uh, Jennifer. Uh, and there's two other. There's a couple other famous teachers. And they're all good. I like them. Uh, however, if you watch my videos, I think I give more. And remember, I have other channels where we teach other things. I think I'm the best. Now, there's one group of teachers, actually a couple teachers I really like, Angvid. I like the Angvid teachers because they're just teaching. They're teaching. They're not talking about how to learn. They're teaching. I think that's great. Angvid, I respect those teachers. Uh, I swear English, I respect him. He's like me, he takes an expression, boom, he teaches it. He gives you an example. If you're interested in British English, he's got a great channel. Learn American English with Teacher Paul. He teaches grammar. <gasps> Boring! But he's a great teacher, and he does a good job. And he teaches, boom. He has a mission. All these guys, they have something that they want to teach you, something specific, and boom, they go to it. Those people I refer to every day. A.J. Hogue, great guy, funny guy, interesting man. Duncan in China, very nice, nice captions, wonderful videos. Uh, who else? Rachel's English, yep, uh, good pronunciation, not too bad. But if I look at those guys and I compare my videos to them, suddenly I'm feeling a little confident, maybe too confident. <laughs> and, and I respect them. I'm just teasing. But the other ones, Engved, I Swear English, and uh, Learn American English with Paul on YouTube. Oh, I do respect those. Because of those guys, I realize that I'm not here. I'm, I'm right here. And those guys are different area, but are ahead of me. So I can always look to them for, to, to get rid of my hubris. To bring down my overconfident. I'm very confident. But if I get overconfident, it's not a good thing. Remember, for you, there will always be somebody stronger, somebody smarter, somebody richer, somebody older, somebody younger, somebody better looking, somebody whatever. There will always, always be somebody better than you. There will be. So remember that and hopefully you will never have a problem with hubris. People in power, as they get more powerful, they tend to get hubris. And that's like a cancer. It's not a good thing. So be careful. It's a great word. Can you see people around you or in your country, in the news, politics, actors, singers, that have hubris? Sometimes when you're a fan, it's okay. Because they are a god. <laughs> but it's not. So be careful. Remember, there is and there will always be somebody better than you. So what do we have to do? We have to keep trying. That's the idea. Hubris is a great word. Check out the dialogue three more times, practice with a friend, and then I'm going to tell you about this book. How can Obama keep spending more than the U.S. makes? Hubris. But doesn't he know this is not a good thing? He's Icarus. Only the sun will wake him up. 
How can Obama keep spending more than the U.S. makes? Hubris. But doesn't he know this is not a good thing? He's Icarus. Only the sun will wake him up. How can Obama keep spending more than the U.S. makes? Hubris. But doesn't he know this is not a good thing? He's Icarus. Only the sun will wake him up. Did you know that we have a book club and it's free? And we have weekly, every week we have a live meeting, we discuss the book. Well, we're start, excuse me, we're starting a new book and the book is called A Secret Gift and this is written by Ted Gupp. Uh, one of my DDM students, Jean-Marie from France, he was reading the book and he told me about it and I said, oh, that sounds like a, a great book for, for our book club. So, uh, now our book club is actually not about print, but a lot of students buy the print book. Our book club is for audio books, for listening. This is a great book for audio, for listening. And you can get this book for free. Go here, www.audibletrial.com slash coach, uh, slash LME. I'll put the, the address right here just to be sure. Go here and you can get it for free, okay? Just uh, go there and then search for A Secret Gift by Ted Gupp, T-E-D-G-U-P. It's a weird name, not a common name. It's a great book. Uh, this is a book, I don't I can't say enough about the book. Now, listening audiobooks is difficult. So what I love to do, I encourage students to get both. Listen to the book and read it. If there's an order, I would want you to read the book and then listen. So every week we, we took this book and we broke it into four parts. So the first part, I forgot. Uh, I forgot where the end is. Hold on a second. Uh, one, three, three, forty six. The first part ends, I think, at 100. A little bit sooner than that. Anyway, uh, sorry. Uh, so we read about a quarter of the book, one-fourth of the book. Listen to the book. Listen to the first hour. Actually, the, in this case, it's about two hours. The first two hours of the book for the first week. And then we have an online meeting where we discuss it. And we talk about the book, we ask some questions, we answer questions. It's a great way. You get to talk with me, you get to talk with other members about this book. But once again, you can get the audio version of this book for free if you go to this address. You have to sign up, and after you sign up, then one month later they're going to charge you a membership. Now usually an audio book like this is about $20, but if you are a member and you can get a membership through me, this book only costs $14.95. It's an excellent deal. And because there's a book club, you have to listen to it, and listening is so important. If you can, I recommend getting the print version at the library maybe, but also get the audio book. It's all about audio. I want you guys to improve your listening. And you can get it for free. So our new book is A Secret Gift. If you're watching the video now and you're interested, go to the website, get the book, start listening. Our first meeting is this Thursday. That's uh, Los Angeles time. And I think we meet at lunchtime. Thursday is at lunchtime. Um, so it's a little bit difficult, I know, for students in Asia, but we're hopefully going to be starting uh, a book club specifically for the people in Asia, from Japan all the way through to, you know, the Middle Eastern part, something that would be convenient for you. So anyway, uh, this is our new book, A Secret Gift by Ted Gupp, T-E-D-G-U-P. His last name is Gupp. Excellent. Wonderful book, especially for listening comprehension. Excellent book. So if you're thinking about it, do it. Sign up. You get it for free. Get it for absolutely free if you go here, once again, uh, through me. And that's it. A secret gift. 
If you join, I'll see you on Thursday. Don't worry if, if you missed this week, that's okay. Next week, we're, we have it again next week. Every week we have these meetings and they're free. As long as you read or listen to the book, join us. Thanks a lot, guys. That's it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you.